Hey yo, Richard here. Jeju Island was one of my favorite parts of my South Korea trip and in this video, I wanted to go over some of my favorite attractions, markets and food options covering East, West and the South side. Hopefully this video is interesting, but before I get to it, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for more Korea and Japan videos coming out soon. But let's get straight into it now. All right, so I have two museum recommendations, so let's start with the first one. Nexon Computing Museum was one of my favorite museums, and it's known as the first permanent museum in Korea that's dedicated to the history of computer and video games. Here we go, Nexon Computing Museum, let's go check it out. Located in the main city, this is one of the few attractions accessible without a car, and if you're a bit of a tech nerd or you love gaming and you're kind of in that kind of realm, you will love this museum. One of the cool features about this museum is you can even try some of the older games like Space Invaders and Doom as well. Overall, the museum takes around 2-3 hours, but this really depends on if you want to rush through the museum or you actually want to sit down and play some of the games. In my opinion, definitely hit this one on the first day. Alright, so the second suggestion of a museum is the Ocelot Tea Museum. Now, it's not really a tea museum as there's only a few things you can learn from a tea perspective. I'd say it's more about buying and trying teas. So, at the cafe you can try teas and buy teas and you can definitely try some of the delicious desserts and drinks they have. I'd also probably check this out at lunchtime so you can actually grab a set to try. Given head to the tea store and buy some of the teas direct. We got some of the Jeju Island teas and definitely some great options you can actually choose from which I found were a bit more unique to Jeju Island. And finally, if you're into skincare, definitely finish off with the inner sweet shop. There's some unique offerings that are only found on Jeju Island and you can sample some of the stuff as well. And the interior looks really awesome. Alright, so now looking at markets, you have to check out the Jeju Dongnam Traditional Market. This is Jeju Island's largest and oldest permanent market featuring a lot of specialty foods that are not even found in South Korea. It's also got a lot of other things like clothing and general stuff, but in my opinion, food is a really big selling point of this market. Alright, for food recommendations, I will try two different things. Jeju Island is really known for its abalone, so if you like abalone, try some of the stuff in the market there. It's super fresh, um, but if you're not into abalone and you're not into seafood, try out black pork. Black pork as a FY is a unique pork only found on Jeju Island. It's definitely something you do need to try. In my opinion, go for the variation with the kebabs. But if you go to the market, there's so many things they're selling. Just pick a bunch and just try with your friends. But in my opinion, those are the two kind of you want to go for. Otherwise, just try what's in the market. There's a lot of other stuff like lobster cheese, for example, that you do need to try as well. All right, so now if you want a bit of exercise or you want to check out a park, I would recommend the Halasan National Park. There are a lot of different hiking trails from easy to kind of a bit hard. If you went in winter also, I would highly recommend getting proper shoes and some hiking poles or you will slip on the snow. Now for some of the harder hikes, for example, hiking to the peak, like the Seong Panak Trail, sorry if I butchered that name, it's around 9.7 kilometers, which gets you top of the track. It's the hardest hike and it will take you a full day. So I'll recommend dedicating and leaving a whole day and starting in the morning. Otherwise, if you just want to do something simple, there are smaller tracks ranging from one to two kilometers as well that you'll only take probably a few hours here and back. What's really cool about this park is the unique ecosystem of plants. And of course, the crater in the middle if you're doing the full walk. Definitely a worthwhile hike if you're definitely into that. Alright, so for some honorable mentions, I'm going to mention the Gim Yong Maze Park. It's around a 1-2 to two hour activity. The maze itself is pretty easy, but the really big selling factor are the kind of 50-60 to 60 cats that do rain, kind of roam around the park. If you're into cats, definitely check it out. The other mention is the Manjungu Cave. Basically, this cave was created by volcanoes and the lava running through it. Pretty cool, definitely like if you're into that stuff, definitely check it out. Otherwise, I would take it off and um, take it off your list. Otherwise, if you're checking out the waterfalls, for example, the Jongbang waterfall or the Chengjongyim waterfall, in my opinion, not really that amazing. They're okay. If you have time, sure, go check it out. Otherwise, I would dedicate more time to the Halasang National Park. Just spend a full day there, to be honest. Uh, some of the other stuff, for example, you have the Snoopy Garden or Jeju Stone Park. Really up to you if you're into that stuff. 
if you're really into Snoopy, for example, you do have to check it out. If you're into Vox, for example, I don't know why you would be, but if you are, check out the Jeju Stone Park. But otherwise, my kind of number one go-to would be the Hearthstone National Park. Alright, so I'm adding this, I'm not sure what to call it, maybe an animal thing, but I'm putting down the Aqua Planet Aquarium. I'm personally a big fan of visiting aquariums everywhere I travel, and I was not disappointed with Jeju Island's Aquarium. It's really good. Aqua Planet itself is a chain of public aquariums that do exist in South Korea, and Jeju Island's one is the largest aquarium. And not only that, it is the largest aquarium itself out of any chain in South Korea. Not only does it have shows involving dolphins and walruses, but it has a huge variety of wildlife, having the largest tank in South Korea as well. So if you're really into aquariums and you want to visit one in South Korea, I would visit the Jeju Island one. It's the best aquarium in South Korea in my opinion, so definitely check it out. And I have checked out other ones in South Korea as well, and I personally think that Kaakwa Planet Aquarium is the best aquarium. Alright, and that's it. So hopefully this video helps you. I try to keep it as short as possible because I've seen some of the other itinerary videos out there and they go longer than 10 to 20 minutes. And I'm sure you just want some of the top suggestions. I've purposely left off a lot of suggestions from Jeju Island. We did a lot more. I did a lot more that didn't make this list because I just don't think it's worth visiting. I have mentioned a few examples. For example, some of the waterfalls. I just don't think they're worth visiting, to be honest. But yeah, hopefully this video helps you kind of plan your next Jeju Island itinerary. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next video. Break downs, red lights, whole hands, grip tight, play face, your lips still taste like Nick D sweet tea. We're trying to drive through without you, without me, sweet tea. Burning rubber, smooth tread on my car tires.